Hey everyone, this is Brian from ActiveMelody.com. In this week's guitar lesson, we're going to take a look at improvising lead over different chord voicings up the neck of the guitar. So this song has uh, three chords. There's an E chord, a B chord, and at one point there's an A. Uh, very easy, basic chords, but I'm going to show you how to play those chords in different positions, but more importantly, how to play leads out of those different chord voicings. It's something that all guitar players do and something you've definitely got to learn how to do if you want to take your improvising to the next level. So this is thinking a little differently than just playing scales. I mean, you're still playing scales, but you're visualizing the different chord voicings. And so we're going to break all of that down over two videos. In this video, we're going to take a look at the first half. If you'd like to watch the second half, as well as download the MP3 jam track that you can practice with and the tablature for this lesson, you're going to want to go to activemelody.com and look for EP144. That's a lesson number for this lesson. So let's go ahead and get started with part one. All right, so let's talk through tone settings real quick, and then we'll jump into the lesson. Um, very basic setup. I'm basically I'm just running through one pedal, which is the Strymon Timeline Delay. There's a little bit of a slapback delay just to fatten up the sound a little, and then out of that straight into the clean channel on the amp. Now, you don't need a delay. You can just play this. Uh, actually, you could do a lot of this with an acoustic guitar, except for maybe some of the bends. Um, but um, just clean channel on your amp would be great. A little reverb as well. Okay, so um, so that's the settings. Now this song is it's got there's three chords. Um, it's in the key of E, and we're going to start with an E chord, and then we're going to go to a, a B7 chord. So it's really going to alternate between the E and the B7. Now in the second video, there's a kind of a I don't I'll, maybe like a bridge I guess where I go go to an A part. But we're not going to cover that in this video. So in this video, it's just going to be back and forth between the E and the B7. Okay. So when I played these notes, if, if you look at where this is from a scale perspective, I'm just playing in the major pentatonic scale, pattern 4. Now, pattern 4 has this little box that happens here between the 2nd and the 4th fret on string 6, 5, and 4. And then it goes up... And then the box comes up here between frets 4 and 6. And then we go. So that's pattern. All of that was pattern 4. And I cover all the patterns uh, over at Active Melody. There's a blues lead course. In fact, these patterns, the major scale patterns, the major pentatonic scale patterns, are exactly the same as the minor pentatonic scale patterns. The only difference is we slide everything down 3 frets. Remember, this way. Uh, to get to the major version of it. So if you're playing an E, for example, and your minor pentatonic scale pattern 1 would be here. So your root fret would be your 12th fret. You'd slide everything down 1, 2, 3 frets. And that would be your major pentatonic scale. So we're just in pattern 4 of the major. Um, okay, so that's where these notes come from, these first three. And it starts here on the 2nd fret, 4th string. Then we go to the 4th fret. 
and then to the sixth fret, all on the fourth string, sliding up to that note. And then we're going to jump up to the third string, and I'm going to hammer on between the fourth and sixth fret, like that. Now remember all of these licks. This is important. This is your takeaway from this. Don't just memorize the notes and not put them in context. What I'd like you to do uh, is memorize these and then take them and start applying them to something else. Pick another song, even in a different key, and see if you can go to this pattern four. And you may need to change the timing or whatever, but the notes themselves should work. It's not going to work over a minor key, but in a major key. Uh, it, it will work. Okay, so then after that I went... Now what I'm doing here is I'm playing an E chord and really what I was doing by starting down here and working up to this position in my mind I'm picturing that pattern four as I mentioned, pattern uh, for the uh, minor pentatonic, major pentatonic scale, but I'm also picturing this chord voicing for, the, for E. So you can make an E chord here, which most of you will know, but you can also make one here. And what this is, if you look at the chord shape, think of the cage system, this is like the C chord shape. It's kind of like making a C chord down here, but you're moving it up. And that's what you're doing. Uh, so your uh, index finger here, by barring the first uh, four strings on the fourth fret, really acts as more of a capo. It allows you to create that C chord shape. And that's what I'm doing. Now here's an easier way to think of making it. Just bar the first four strings on the fourth fret. And then put your uh, middle finger down on the fifth fret second string and then your ring finger down on the sixth fret fourth string. And that's how I play that. I, and I, you know, Keith Richards. You, I, you hear me refer to him a lot in these, and, and I got that lick from him. I know he plays in a different tuning and everything, but that's the effect. It allows you to hammer on a chord like that, to go between this chord and this chord. And it's just a really cool effect. So that's what we're doing. That's an E chord. Now, and so you can think of making it that way. Real easy to make it that way. The other way to think about it, if you just play the top part of it, is that's just a D chord shape but we're playing it here. So just remember that. If you want to make an E chord here, you can make one here, or you can uh, bring your fingers down here. You can even add your pinky there on the seventh fret, fifth string, if you wanted. But once you can visualize that chord, you can start pulling any of those notes out of that chord and using those in your solo. So when I went... I just built the chord. So that's the 4th fret, I played strings 4, 3, and 2, and then I hammered on these two fingers, just like I showed you how to make that chord. Okay, after that I went... I just walked right up the chord. So that's the 4th uh, string on the 6th fret, there's the 4th fret 3rd string, 6th fret 3rd string, there's the 5th fret 2nd string. See, look at how those notes are right in that chord. And then what I did was I walked up to a different voicing of the E chord. So I know that this is a voicing, but I also know there's one up here. Let's do a little triad on the first three strings. Or you can play it like this. It's that using the A chord shape. That's all that is uh, here where the, this bar is on the ninth fret. But if you just want to play the top part of that chord... This is how I do it anyway. Uh, my index finger is on the seventh fret first string, ring fingers on the ninth fret uh, second string, and then middle fingers on the ninth fret third string. And that's a slideable chord. You can play it all over the place. So that's a, if that's an E, if you go down two frets, that's a D, or that's a C. So anyway, just different ways to make your chords. It's always important to know how to play your chords in different positions. You don't have to go nuts with it, but at least know two or three. Because what that will allow, allow you to do is play a lead like this and you can start to connect the dots between the chords. So then what we have is... There's that first voicing. Now when I slid up here, look at what these two notes are. These are just 
two notes right out of that chord I just showed you. And so that makes it easy to visualize. I can see that E chord there. So it's easy to visualize that lick. And that's, that's how you do it. So to get the notes out of it, uh, my ring finger is up here on the 9th fret 2nd string, and then my pointer finger is on the 7th fret 1st string. And now I know that the song is about to switch to the B chord. And so I know that to play a B chord, I could play a B chord here. Or I could play one up here. And if you look at this, this is very convenient because I happen to be going... I happen to be in this E chord shape here. Look how easy that uh, would be to switch to the B chord right here. And that's exactly what I did by going... By playing these two notes, it's just the top two notes out of the B major bar chord. So just remember that too when you're playing leads and you're doing these little double stops or you're playing uh, two strings at once. Don't feel that you have to play the entire chord. You can just play a couple of notes out of a chord and a lot of times that I think it even sounds better because you can, you can give it vibrato, you can slide it around, you have more control that way. Okay from here I kept my index finger on the 7th fret 1st string and went I slid up here. Now some of you may want to use your pinky, but that's going up to the 10th fret on the 2nd string. And then back down to the 9th uh, fret. And then that's where I did the bar of the first two strings on the 7th fret. And the reason that that works with the, the backing track is because that's where the B chord is. Or the B7th chord. So we have... And then to re-emphasize that point, I went, and that is a, this is another little uh, chord embellishment that I hope that you use a lot. Let me show you how to do it, and I'll show you how you can apply it. So I keep that bar there, this, the first two strings on the seventh fret. My ring finger comes up here to the ninth fret third string. And then I play, it's, it's really creating a sus chord, like a sustain chord. But, I'm going uh, strings three, two, and one, and then I go ahead. I keep the bar there, and then I put my middle finger down on the eighth fret third string, and that is the B chord. That's just the triad, the B triad. Those three notes, the one, three, and five, out of the B chord. We're just playing the top three notes out of it. So we have. And that's what I did. I didn't really strum all three. I went... Since you've got that bar down the whole time, those notes just ring out anyway, and they're part of this chord. So it's a real easy transition to go from here to here. Um, okay, so the what I was getting at with this embellishment of this chord is that's an easy one to always go to if you want to fill the space if you're playing rhythm guitar or even if you're playing lead like in this case um, and let's say you were on a G chord it's kind of a nice way to um, extend out uh, your playing and it's easy to do because you can just think about well that's the G chord I'm just gonna add this one note here which makes it more of a G sustain chord. And um, anyway with that you can do all kinds of things. You know you can get into all kinds of fancy stuff but that's all that is. But it sounds great. Um, let me back up and play everything up to this point, up to that B. So from the start we have... There's the B7th. Now watch this. That's just going right back down to the E chord. So that's where we're going. That's that E chord using the D chord shape that I just showed you. And so we're going to go from this triad, which is the B, and I'm going to go down, up, down. I'm going to slide it down two frets. If you look at what I just made there, that's an A chord, right? Just 
the top three strings out of it. And that's just a transition chord to get us from the B back to the E. And you can, your ear tells you that that works. And then we're back to the E, uh, e chord using that D chord shape. And then I, w I played. And all I did for that was I just played strings. I kept the chord shape here and then I went string one, two, put my pinky down here on the fifth fret first string and did a pull off. You can see, see I just picked it once. And then back to string two and then back to string three. So when you play it all together, it goes. Nice sound. And that's a great little uh, embellishment as well. It's doing the same thing as this. It's just adding that uh, sus um, sustain in there um, by adding your pinky there. And you could do that for any of these D chord shapes. So now if you mix that with this, you start to get um, a lot of new op uh, options when you're playing uh, lead or, or rhythm. It, it works either way. So even if you're strumming. Um, okay, so <clears throat> we came down to here, then I went. All right, so let me back up. I'll play through everything up to that point, and that will conclude this first part. And uh, you'll have this, and you'll have all these new licks that you can start working in. And uh, uh, if you're not a premium member and you just want to take these licks and, and see how you can apply them, uh, try them over uh, another song or another jam track. Um, I always recommend just playing along with any song, even just turn on the radio. But if you are a premium member, obviously you'll have the, the jam track, and you can plug them in and get your timing uh, worked out and everything. Um, okay, so let's uh, go through this one more time and then we'll move on to the part two video. So here we go. Mm -hmm. 